Welcome to Accreditation Conversations. I'm your host, Amy Dykins from Weave, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Dr. Martha Mock. Martha, thank you so much for coming and speaking with us today. We were uh, introduced uh, to each other by uh, Mark LaSalle Peterson of AQIP. Uh, and he shared with me that you had an interesting story because you're starting a brand new accreditation. Um, and so I don't get the opportunity very often to talk to somebody. I mean, this isn't something that happens every day. Uh, and so I wanted to start to capture your story for our listeners. So thank you. Um, so to get us started, I'm going to ask you to share a little bit more about what is this accreditation? You know, why are you doing this? How did you get involved? Uh, and kind of let you take it from here. Great. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity, Amy, to um, share the story because it's a, it's a long journey. Um, we're really excited to be at this point um, and, how, and how we got here. So I'm currently the, the chair of the Think College National Coordinating Center Accreditation Workgroup. So tell me a little bit about the, um, the accreditation that you're starting right? And how you got involved in it, right? Why, why, why this particular accreditation? Great. Thank you. Um, so I got involved because I was uh, working with uh, colleges and universities here in New York to develop programs for students with intellectual disabilities at colleges. And so after about a decade of working on the program development side, uh, Meg Griegel, who is the director of Think College, which is a national organization based at University of Massachusetts, Boston, um, invited me to chair uh, the most recent iteration of the uh, National Coordinating Center's uh, Think College work group, which is focused specifically on um, creating an accrediting process for all of the 300 plus programs that are across the nation. Okay. Can you give us just a little bit more context around um, what these programs are um, really focused on, kind of students that they serve? Sure, sure. So um, we're focusing on uh, programs. Uh, so being a pro becoming a program accreditor for programs of students with intellectual disabilities. And intellectual disability is a disability like Down syndrome. Um, there's a number of other um, types of disabilities that involve intellectual disability. Um, but, you know, perhaps it's someone who um, attended special education in high school, but wants to continue on, continue their education um, at the college level. So we're talking about, uh, you know, folks who want to learn, who um, want to go to college, who want to live on campus, who want to have campus jobs. So all of those various pieces, um, as well as attending classes and um, academics, um, is part of going to college um, for everyone and really, you know, the focus of these programs as well. Perfect. And you mentioned uh, an organization, Think College. Can you say just a little bit more about that organization for us? Sure, sure. So uh, Think College is based at the University of Massachusetts at the ICI, and they have um, worked for over a decade, uh, more like 15 plus years, to really bring um, this idea to the forefront of both higher education um, as well as schools, um, high schools, in terms of thinking about opportunities for students with intellectual disability. So um, they have a number of different grants and different efforts, but they're really, they are the national leader, um, both in terms of providing technical assistance to universities and colleges who are considering developing programs, um, as well as for families and students who are looking for places to go. So they have great resources on their, on their website. Yeah, very nice. I know they've been critical in success of getting you to this point. Uh, and so uh, you uh, said the name of your new accreditation for us, um, but we kind of glossed over it a little bit. And so I would love for you to share, because this is new, right? You've, you have now named your accreditation organization. We have, we have. So it is the um, Inclusive Higher Education Accreditation Council. Um, so IHEAC, or the council for short, is what we're uh, calling it internally. Um, 
you know, in terms of shorthand. But uh, we're very excited to have uh, launched this effort um, and <clears throat> have been, um, you know, it's really an integral part of what we're doing as it relates to the work group. So, so the work group, talk about that a little bit. This is something that has uh, been a part of uh, this process for many, 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 many years to get you to the point where you're now we have an accreditation organization. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit of the history around the work group? Sure, sure. So um, as part of uh, the U.S. Department of Education grant that Think College received back in 2010, part of that um, effort was focused on creating an accreditation work group. So, you know, much of the work was that Think College did was related to, um, you know, providing technical assistance, helping colleges, families, but the accreditation work group and the um, past chair, uh, Stephanie Smith Lee, um, who remains on the uh, current work group, luckily for me, um, has been uh, wonderful in terms of, you know, all of the work that they did. So they were the, um, the group that over a decade's time, the first work group for five years focused on developing the standards. And um, the second work group focused specifically on field testing the standards. So, you know, making sure that there was public comment, ensuring that professionals, families, students, all could see and respond to the um, standards that were developed. So we've been fortunate at this point, um, you know, to take it forward in terms of creating an accreditation process. But the the um, over decade, you know, decade of work that went into um, creating these standards and the um, you know the hundreds of hundreds of people that were uh, they were put in front of um, is is you know. We're fortunate to have that base in terms of thinking about the process and really, you know, then allowing us to think about developing the um, Inclusive Higher Ed uh, Accreditation Council. You're talking about a couple of things there that I'd love for us to explore a little bit. Um, they're really important to the concepts of higher education quality assurance. Uh, and so uh, this was an initiative that started many, many years ago that was around um, helping to serve a very particular group of um, potential students and their parents, stakeholders around um, these folks. And the decision was made that a part of the strategy would be an accreditation. Why, why is that? Yes. So, um, I mean, I think it speaks to the, um, the vision of both the past chair as well as uh, Think College in understanding the context of higher education. So within higher education, as we know, right, accreditation is a thing. <laughs> accreditation is a very important uh, piece of what we do so that, um, you know, families who are, you know, providing their resources for their um, kids to go to college or you know, be part of programs, students themselves um, have access to quality programming. And that is the same for our students as well. Um, many of our students are attending programs that are non-degree or certificate programs based at colleges, but they are, you know, they have programs of study, they have all the things um, that, uh, you know, make a um, high quality program. Nice, and so now you'll be able to assure that quality I'm utilizing a tried and true method uh, in higher education. Uh, I love that. And so you also spoke a little bit about some of the process around establishing standards, right? And um, you spoke um, about the, the process of kind of going to the public and stakeholders and getting um, those standards vetted and approved. But that started like, like the whole collection of standards that started way before that kind of final steps towards finalizing the, the standard collection. Can you say a little bit more about um, how the standard collection was even like decided on to begin with before you went to comment? You know, folks within uh, higher education accreditation writ large were consulted in terms of thinking about, okay, what are the 10 areas that we need to be thinking about, right, related to accreditation? And then, um, 
you know, looking at what was occurring in our field, which was a very new field at the time. So, you know, this is not like nursing or, you know, other other types of accreditation that may have been begun, you know, in in the last, uh, I don't know, 100 years or so. Um, we have a shorter, um, you know, a shorter time span that we're that we're looking at. But um, in terms of thinking specifically about how, you know, we decided on which which standards, how the work group decided on which ones, you know, part of that was looking at what CHIA and what U.S. Department of Education require, right? There are specific areas within accreditation that are there for very good reasons. Um, and so, you know, things like mission, things, um, you know, things like length and structure of the program, uh, student complaints, ensuring that students um, you know, have access to information, all of those various pieces, so that they can be successful within the, within the programs. Um, so it's certainly, uh, for some, has been, you know, it's, it's trailblazing work, I would say. And, um, you know, for some folks in higher ed who hadn't considered this population necessarily um, being involved in college, um, it's been a stretch, but a good stretch. Um, in terms of thinking about being inclusive and, you know, having having programs that um, could be accredited um, on their campus. Yeah, very nice. Uh, I cannot imagine um, waking up and, and being like, okay, we're going to start a new accreditation. And there's just all these moving parts. But I know um, from our conversations that you guys have spent um, the time that's been necessary uh, to go through this process very intentionally and very carefully uh, and utilizing all these best practices that you're pulling together into um, where you are currently, right? And so give us a status update. Where are you with your accreditation? Now you're, you've got a standards collection, you've got a, a name, which is exciting for your organization. What now? Yes. Um, so we are on, we just received actually the first uh, self-study. So um, there's five um, pilots and our first pilot uh, completed their self-study about two weeks ago. That's Western Carolina. Um, Dr. Kelly Kelly at the UP program. And um, so that has been very exciting and we're going to be having uh, the first site visit uh, at the end of March. So we're really looking forward to um, to that process in terms of, um, you know, all that we will learn that will really help us refine the, um, the accreditation process. Um, yeah. so congratulations. That's, that's exciting. You. you have your first self-study has been submitted. Um, you had to, uh, identify these five pilot programs though. Right. How do you do like you ask for volunteers like you put up a billboard? Hey, we're opening an accreditation. Yeah. <laughs> How does that work? Well, it's you know, it is quite interesting, actually. Um, there have been folks who have been in the field for, you know, since the mid 2000s. I mean, the mid. Uh, yeah. So like 2005 and such um, who have been watching the. Uh, you know, Higher Education Opportunity Act was passed in 2008 that included students with intellectual disabilities and put a, you know, a real stake in the ground around accreditation and programs for, for students. And um, so there's been a number of programs that were, have been interested and have been following accreditation. And they're and waiting. No, <laughs> waiting excitedly um, to launch, which so for the first, uh, to answer your question, for the first pilot site, um, we already had a list of, I'd say approximately, you know, 15 programs who, you know, over the last few years had reached out to Think College and said, hey, you know, if and when you get to the process, when you get to the process of, uh, you know, piloting this process, we're interested in participating. Um, so we did work with our accreditation work group members. So our, I can't say enough about all of our uh, 21 members of the accreditation work group. Um, they have been working in small committees. And one of the committees is, you know, is focused on 
pilot site criteria and, you know, selecting the pilot sites um, and ensuring that we had, uh, you know, especially for these five, but certainly for the first one, um, a program that was going to be brave, a program that was going to be bold and brave. And because they're really, you know, this is the first one. Um, so while it's exciting, um, you know, I think, you know, it's also a matter of recruiting, recruiting a learning partner. And that's really what Western Carolina and Dr. Kelly Kelly have been. And I so That's interesting. You said that because you mentioned um, you're going to have a site visit and that you'll learn so much. Right. Uh, and that this is um, not something that it's like, oh, we're, we're done. Yeah. So as you are thinking about this, you've gotten to this point. Um, there have been challenges along the way. Right. And maybe some anticipated kind of um, things that, you know, that you're wondering about as you go into this site visit. Can you share a little bit with us, like, you know, those challenges, how you've overcome challenges, what challenges you see in your near future? Right. Oh, that's a great question. So um, one of the initial challenges that we had was actually, um, you know, being able to effectively communicate both with the pilot sites and then with the peer reviewers and, um, you know, with myself and my colleague, Mary Judge, who were, um, who were, you know, doing a review for completion and Weave has helped us with that. So that has been, um, you know, a wonderful um, partnership that um, I just want to call out here because that, that really, um, you know, versus other other types of solutions or emailing things back and forth, like those are not secure. Those are not, that is not the way to conduct, conduct accreditation in that sense. So we were really fortunate, I think. That was one of our big challenges in terms of figuring out what and how that was going to occur. Um, and so that has been, that has given us, you know, I think a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but, um, you know, to move forward. Yeah, I was going to say it gives you structure. It gives you a way to um, have a framework that you're not reinventing. Right. And that that makes a big difference when you get to this like execution piece, it feels like. Right. Like you I, we say this all the time in accreditation and assessment in working with folks you're the experts in that field. Right. Like I am not a insert discipline expert. Right. But having um, a, uh, again, quality assurance has best practices, right? And having access to those kind of resources makes a big difference for not just a new accreditor, but for anybody who is in this space, right? There's a lot of really good work that you can uh, leverage. And so I appreciate that. Um, and I'm glad to hear that we've been able to assist with some of that as you're getting started. When you're thinking about um, also then, uh, so you've got a site visit coming up. You've got evaluators, right? You also have um, then had to recruit evaluators. You have a peer evaluator group. How did that happen? What happened there? We do. Um, so again, we were fortunate to um, have folks who have been anticipating, um, you know, this um, accreditation uh, becoming real and um, folks who have been um, you know, accreditors in other realms or other disciplines that are lending their expertise here. So we have three members of our um, accreditation work group who have volunteered um, to be the peer reviewers for this first pilot. So um, that has been been really, really exciting. Um, so that, uh, yeah. And then I imagine after um, you complete this process, then uh, the evaluators will complete their report back for the institution and make a recommendation uh, that will then uh, result in um, an accreditation or a um, you know, a sad news for the program, right? That's not usually anticipated, especially for a pilot. And, and again, my, my experience when you're choosing um, those first institutions, you're choosing folks that you know, like we're pretty sure they're going to be able to be successful at this because you don't want to pick like the folks that are going to struggle yeah. kind of feeling. Yeah. 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 yeah we want to figure out, um, you know, we want to refine the process with um, 
folks who are, um, you know, have structures in place related to all the various quality assurance measures, right? That, um, you know, sure, there's all there's always areas that each of our programs can improve upon. But, um, you know, thinking about it from that standpoint, our, yeah, our peer reviewers are, you know, are really excited to get on the ground at the end of March and, um, and dig in to the student experience, the alumni experience, uh, interview, you know, family members who, you know, support students, talk with the staff, talk with the leaders and, um, and really see how the, the program is fully integrated to the campus and to college life there at Western Carolina. So um, they're really excited about that. Excellent. So we'll switch gears just a little bit and talk a little bit more internal, like high level things. Uh, you shared with me uh, that you now have a board. We do. We have. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Four founding board members. Um, Stephanie Smith Lee, uh, Madeline Will, Tom Sanicandro, and Elise McMillan, um, who bring, um, you know, collectively bring both a, um, a gravitas to, to our, our field and our um, programs, given their expertise in um, the area of whether it be policy making, policy advising, um, connections, and work within uh, U.S. you know Office of Special Education, U.S. Department of Education, all of those places, um, as well as higher education. So Lisa Millen comes from higher education and um, will be a, you know a great asset um, to us in that sense. And and uh, Tom brings um, his expertise. He's an attorney, um, and he also brings his expertise related specifically to um, policy, but from a, a slightly different aspect because he's a former uh, state legislator from Massachusetts um, who was uh, you know who was a force within Massachusetts along with Think College to get legislation passed there to support colleges and universities and, um, you know, funding uh, programs for students with intellectual disabilities. So, and they are all um, actually family members. They all have a family member who has an intellectual disability. So I think that is, you know, that's one of the reasons that, that many of them, you know, chose their areas of expertise or their field um, is that family history. But um, in and of themselves, they are professionals of uh, great renown and professionals who, you know, I'm so thankful to uh, be able to continue to work with. Um, yeah, that's excellent. And, and having a wonderful board like that, it's so uh, important from um, the perspective of, as you said, it, it gives uh, import to what you're trying to do uh, and um, also adds that tremendous amount of expertise that they can continue to guide the organization going forward as you move away from being a work group to being a, an actual organization that's accrediting uh, these programs. As a part of that work, um, I know that um, also the Department of Education, you've mentioned a couple times, uh, is also something that you're uh, having to pay attention to. Can you say a little bit more about that? You know, why is that important for your organization and what does that process kind of look like or, or will look like for you going forward? Yes, yes, thank you for that. So the um, the uh, U.S. Department of Education will be the entity that we will be, you know, working to become uh, nationally recognized, to have the council nationally recognized by. Once we complete our pilots, once we've refined our process, once our board has, you know, has made their determinations related to the five pilots, um, which is really their charge, um, we plan to apply for national recognition as a, an accreditation council. And um, I mean, I think that is, you know, the, as we know that, you know, the two big entities, U.S. Department of Ed and CHIA are the, are the entities who can do that. Um, and it's, you know, they're the accreditor of the accreditors, right? So as a program accreditor, um, we can have standards, we can have a process, we can have an organization, um, but making sure that we meet the mark as it relates to becoming nationally recognized is essential um, because that's, you know, that's really where, where we need, um, 
I mean, we want our programs to um, ha be able to say that, that they are, you know, recognized not just by us, but by, you know, having gone, being, that, being by a nationally recognized entity. So I think that's really important. One thing that is a little bit different about our programs. So at times folks, um, you know, are, are going for the national recognition through the U.S. Department of Education to access federal financial aid. Our students already have access to federal financial aid. That was baked in, that was built in to the Higher Education Opportunity Act in 2010. So that's a separate process from accreditation for our programs and for our students. Um, so they have access to certain types of, of federal aid. So that process will remain, that process will you know, continue um, alongside accreditation. Um, but we're, we're so excited to be, uh, yeah, looking at the accreditation handbook, um, my light reading. I was going to say light <laughs> reading. I mean, honestly, though, great job of getting to this point, but also being willing, even though you don't have to, for your students, you don't, you don't have to go um, to that next level, because as you said, you know, it's not something where you've got like a funding gatekeeper or anything like that, but that you're taking it very seriously that you want to make sure that you have transparency, you have somebody else that is also doing that quality assurance process that, you know, you're a part of as an accreditation organization, somebody else is also inspecting the work that you're doing. So good job. I know that would be on top of all the other things that might be something it would be easy to like cross off the the list. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll be watching and um, cheerleading you. from the side. If there's anything that we can do to support Thank that work, you. we want to do that as well. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you work. as, oh, oh go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I was going to say, yeah, we made, we did make that strategic decision and made that, you know, obviously in close partnership with the Think College leadership, knowing and understanding that national recognition is, you know, where we need to be. Um, you know, in terms of uh, both the students we're serving as well as, um, you know, what it means to families too. Excellent. I can't wait to hear more. <laughs> so as we are finishing up today, I always like to ask folks, you and I were talking before we got started uh, about, you know, what are you reading or listening to these days? And um, we are um, asking that of all of our guests because it's interesting that um, the folks who are listening to the podcast, as well as a lot of my guests and the folks that I interact with, we come from higher ed and we just, we, we happen to be readers. A lot of these folks, you know, that are listening and, and yourself and myself, we like to read for pleasure. We like to read for, uh, you know, self-improvement, for professional development. Um, and so I like to ask folks, you know, what are you reading? You know, what is on your mind? Do you have anything you would recommend to us? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Actually, I'm rereading a book that um, I would recommend to everyone. It's called Tell Me More, um, and it's by Kelly Corrigan. And um, it's a few years old, and actually she now has a um, podcast and a, a PBS series, I believe, um, that's related to, you know, sort of observing. She has a wonderful way of um, observing life as it's happening <laughs> and finding both the the um, humanity in it, um, but also the humor. <laughs> so I have really, you know, appreciated, I've, I've reread it, um, like I said, you know, most recently um, in terms of, you know, thinking about uh, listening, you know, because that's a lot of what uh, this position actually is, is listening to various stakeholders, listening, you know, but figuring out where people are coming from. And that's really what the, you know, one of the things that I appreciate about, about that book. Nice. Thank you so much. I can't wait to read it. And it feels like one of those skills, like you said, you can use it in so many parts of our lives, right? But yes, again, higher ed, accreditation, mm -hmm. quality assurance, lots of listening, <laughs> too much talking sometimes. We don't want that. <laughs> Exactly. Some more listening. Uh, yes. so, so thank you for that recommendation. Um, yeah. So if somebody wanted to learn more from you, they wanted to follow up, continue the conversation, what would be the best way to get a hold of you? 
Um, the best way would probably be the thinkcollege.net website. So there's actually, I mean, if you want to see what we're doing related to accreditation, there is a section on that site um, about accreditation and what's going on uh, in terms of where we are and resources and who our, our great accreditation work group members are um, and all of that kind of thing. And um, yeah, then phone or email here at the University of Rochester would be um, the other place. Excellent. Thank you so much for being on the show today. We really appreciate it. And I look forward to hearing more as we continue forward with you. Thank you. Thanks so much for the opportunity, Amy. I appreciate it.